discussing the 2019 operating budget, and it focuses on economic mobility for Madison residents, dealing with the challenges we have in regards to disparity and making sure that our economy includes uh, as many Madison residents as possible. Efforts are underway to develop and apply data toward process improvements and resource allocations that deliver the results that city residents expect. I want to point out that while we see a lot of dramatic stories uh, in the news on a regular basis about the functions of government, whether it's dealing with a storm or it's questions of public safety, that internally we are continuing to work on becoming a smart city and improving our, our, our internal management practices. In 2019, a periodic resident survey will be launched to establish baseline data and measure progress towards better outcomes for our entire city as, as part of this effort. The 2017 budget added 400,000 for peer support programs to help address rising violence in some parts of our city. The 2019 budget adds an additional 300,000 uh, despite the fact that efforts to increase this funding for 2018 were turned down by previous city, the previous city council. I want to point out that 2016 was uh, a violent year. 2017 was the worst year we had in regards to homicides. Uh, in the first six or so months of the year, we had nine young African-American males involved in homicides involving the deaths of nine African-American males. Since this program was implemented uh, in, in August of last year and we were on the ground, we have now seen in the last 15 months two such homicides. I believe that, that police law enforcement had something to do with it, but there's no question in, in my mind that our peer support effort was critical in addressing these issues. I want to see us take it to a new level where we're not just responding to, to violence and, and preventing uh, retaliation, but we are actually building connections into employment, into housing, and into uh, a healthy, healthy environment for all. The budget also fully funds the eight full-time police officers that were added in the 2018 budget and adds $100,000 for new detective position to expand the work of the Special Victims Unit. Now, city expenditures are projected to grow about 5.5%, funded in part by a 4.7% increase in the property tax levy. Debt service continues to be a, a concern as it's now rising as we'd predicted. Uh, fortunately, through some of the steps we've taken, the uh, trajectory that was leading us to 21 percent is at 17 percent. I hope we can stabilize it here and uh, then see it back down to where it ought to be under 13 percent. Uh, the debt service, of course, is part of uh, the commitments we've made for all the infrastructure, including new police stations, fire stations, the renovated municipal building, branch libraries, and major street improvements. Uh, through the following initiatives, the 2019 budget makes targeted investments that we can all afford and makes progress towards building a, a safer community. We're providing $1.1 million for a pre-service academy to meet increased turnover because of retirements uh, among Commission Madison police staff. We're, as I've said, expanding the Special Victims Unit by authorizing a new detective position and upgrading a police officer to detective sergeant. We've got to add $300,800 $300, now to fully annualize our share of the operating costs for the 2014 COPS grant, which added more officers. And, of course, we're providing $128,000 to fully annualize the costs of the new uh, Madison Police District Station. Police overtime is going to run almost $300,000. And it's a small item, but an important item, $25,000 so that all of our officers can have smartphones, which are, are so critical. 
Uh, I'd already mentioned that we're taking the peer support community service program up to a total of 700,000. And we are expanding, and this was prior to the presence of ICE in the city two weeks ago, we're expanding our uh, support for contracting legal services for the immigration community uh, and providing assistance to $100,000. A last minute addition to my, uh, my uh, budget is $100,000 for transitional funding for Kashiba House, uh, the Dane County, as Dane County evaluates its project and addresses the decision by Journey Mental Health to close the facility. I want to point out that even though the city does not have statutory responsibility, nor the funding sources that the state and the county have in regards to behavioral health, in regards to substance abuse, we are going to take steps in these areas and if necessary, uh, provide uh, what limited funding resources we can. We know, we know that close to one third of our police and fire department budgets stem for responses to incidents that involve behavioral health and substance abuse and we will make uh, all the necessary uh, changes uh, when others don't meet their commitments. We've wanted for some time to add additional funding for community and neighborhood centers. And consequently, there's an additional $104,000 for community centers, including Teresa Terrace, Bayview, Elver, and the Kennedy uh, neighborhood operations. We're putting in and augmenting uh, funding for $20,000 for homeowner capacity building through courses and money management, credit building and repair, homeownership, stable renting, and asset building. I hope that the private, series, private sector financial services industry, the banks particularly, and the credit unions will make a significant investment in joining with us in expanding these services. They have in the past. The funding has been tenuous at times and uneven. But if we are going to have a commitment and recognize that housing is first, we have to make sure that home ownership opportunity is available to all people and that uh, people do not get in trouble uh, and lose their housing because they can't afford to pay the rent so they have challenges in terms of financially managing the resources. I want to see us improve our economic development efforts. Uh, and we're increasing city support for MADREP, formerly known as Thrive, to 50000 uh, by $50,000, uh, to 50000 and a commitment of 150000 over three years. The work that MADREP has done in the last six, seven years has just been immeasurable in terms of ex uh, exporting information about Madison working with our own economic development team and creating new investment, uh, both opportunities for local businesses as well as new businesses in our community. We're going to uh, expand our neighborhood resource team and community garden work. That's a $20,000 commitment. Where we're going to work to complete and accurately uh, finish the decennial census count. Uh, every city in the country has an enormous stake in the 2020 census. And we've, we've been through this before, but let's, let's remember that billions of federal dollars and some state dollars are determined by the outcome of the census. While the nation's cities and mayors are pushing for an expanded federal commitment to an accurate census count, we're actually seeing the Trump administration and the Department of Commerce going backwards. And so it means it's so incumbent on us to make this modest investment to make sure that everyone is counted. And in the age of Trump, with so much repression and so much uh, hostile talk, we are deeply concerned that Immigrant communities, communities of color, are going to be reluctant 
to raise their hands and be counted in this census, and we must have this data. Uh, we're going to see improvements in public outreach efforts in our engineering activities, uh, particularly as it rates, relates to our recent severe weather events, and we'll be providing $65,000 for a new public information officer. The role of IT uh, in getting accurate information out uh, throughout the year, but particularly after the storm of August 20th and the uh, succeeding events, uh, was vital to, to the residents of our community. We have known for some time. We are lagging far behind in, in not having uh, adequate resources in regards to information technology. This budget provides a three and a quarter percent pay increase for all non-transit general municipal employees. It funds a 2% increase for transit workers pursuant to their collective bargaining agreement. Pay increases for commissioned police and fire staff will be determined through the collective bargaining process where, where we're presently engaged. Pay increases, steps in longevity, longevity for existing staff, annualizing of positions and uh, the new positions that were created in 2018 but not fully funded will take up an additional $8.3 million in this new budget. We're going to be adding $2.2 million for rising fuel and vehicle depreciation, depreciation costs in fleet services and in Madison Metro. We'll be looking at efficiencies and improved accounting and strengthening internal controls by consolidating the Treasurer's Office into the Finance Department during 2019. The Treasurer position will be converted to a Treasury and Revenue Manager. We'll need ordinance changes and personnel actions, uh, which will be introduced to the Council for consideration uh, to implement this change. Uh, balancing the budget was achieved through the following measures. And this is really critical, and, and I'm, I'm proud of the work our staff has done in contributing to the discussion about the cost of uh, health services in our community and in the nation. We've seen a lot of discussion focused on the availability of health insurance, but we have to get to the fundamental question of how do we control the costs of that great health service. As you know, I've been working for several years now, engaged in conversations with uh, management at our hospitals and the insurance companies, and we've seen a 6% reduction this coming year in the city contribution towards health insurance premiums due to a 16% reduction by Dean Health Plan, which saves $1.7 million compared uh, to the 2018 budget amounts. Increases in the employee share of health insurance premiums for courts, courts, UW, and group health cooperative South Central Wisconsin will be more than offset by the three and a quarter percent pay increase for general city employees, as well as step in longevity pay increases for over half of the city workforce. An increase in investment earnings has helped us uh, manage this budget. Uh, the city's general fund cash balance of uh, 2.4 million uh, has uh, produced us, uh, resulted from increases of a half a percent in early 2017 to 2.5% 2 returns by the anticipated by the end of 2019. There'll be increases in other general fund revenues and state aid of about 2.7 million, including a 10% growth in payment in lieu of taxes from the parking and water utilities, a 4% growth in our really vital room tax, uh, which is a result of the, the good work we're doing in terms of attracting visitors to the city. We'll see a 9% growth in licenses and permit or revenues based on prior year trends and a modest 2.7% increase in state aid. Questions? Okay, that was pretty thorough, Paul. Yes. Well, just to clarify, so the funding for Gishia House would be in addition to the 40,000? Yes, it is. Recently yeah, the 100,000. The 40,000, as you know, is to take Gishia House through the end of 2018. And there's not much question in my mind that this matter is not going to be 
properly resolved by the first of the year. I'm very disappointed, obviously, in the decisions. Uh, I articulated this at prior meetings that the uh, Hmong and Cambodian communities uh, responded when the uh, this country in the 1960s asked them to become engaged in what's become to be known as the CIA's secret war. We made all kinds of promises. Uh, the communities, the families were just devastated. Uh, the, the, the consequences in terms of traumatic events and stress are, are well known and well documented. And as I said earlier, this community has asked very little from us. They were hurt considerably by some of the cuts in social services made by the Walker administration several years ago. And now Kashiba House, which has played such an important uh, role in family life, is, is, is in jeopardy. Um, I, I just couldn't bear the thought that uh, this program would come to, come to an end and that these, these folks would be uh, left to, to fend for themselves. Many of them, many of the elders uh, speak little or no English. And again, uh, this is a place of, of refuge and comfort for them. I simply do not understand the, uh, the action by Journey through its county funding of, of eliminating the program. And clearly, we don't think any alternatives they've laid out are adequate. On the funding for the PIO position related to engineering and, and storm events, is this coming directly from what the city just experienced in regard to the August No, we've storm? been fighting for this, and the council turned us down. We wanted to, uh, we, we came in with a recommendation for the 2018 budget. Uh, the city is way behind on having public information officers. We don't have the capacity to put them in every department where needed. And so it's our recommendation that, and we were correct as we experienced uh, from the August 20th events, that having this public information officer in uh, IT would be appropriate where then all these agencies could rely collectively, streets, uh, engineering, traffic engineering, parks, water utility uh, has got their own, uh, but also uh, uh, fleet services and these other agencies, including my own office, uh, would have someone who, when information changes, literally within hours, have uh, a reliable, skilled, technical person available, and we saw how vital it was to the people of this community. So I'm hoping this year our recommendation will be heated. You mentioned the, the flooding from earlier this summer. Did, did that have a, a large effect on you guys as you were putting this year's budget together? I know there was some talk in the middle of it that effects could last into the spring. Well, it, the, the, the major effect will be seen in really 2020. The, the budget was pretty much put together when the August 20th damage hit, and so much of what we need to examine is going to take study and analysis before we can come up with design, which then leads to major expenditures. So for example, uh, we've got to join with Shorewood and revisit decisions about what to do about University Avenue. Uh, we've got to continue focusing on the decision made at Lakes Management by the county on uh, the fact that they keep the Lake, Lake Mendota level so high and that they need to focus on exhausting uh, all possible alternatives in getting water to flow out of Lake Monona through Mud Lake down to Kaganza and Wabisa. So uh, at this point, and, and there, there are some changes. 
we already had planned in the 2019 budget uh, design uh, measures for McKenna Boulevard. We are going to go through with design changes in 2019 and implement them, but we are going to go back and revisit them because those were redesigned to handle 100-year uh, storms and we had a 500-year storm. So we're going to have to make some modifications for that. The public information officer who played such a vital role uh, with the director of IT handling that role really during the storm, something we'd been working on, as I said, for two years now, Hopefully, this event will demonstrate the need uh, for for that officer. Speaking of which, um, the current rising of Lake Mendota, um, what are your concerns, and do you guys plan on taking any different action as you did a couple, like a month ago? Well, as we said uh, at the end of August and early September, this is going to be with us as a threat at least through next spring and perhaps next summer. Depends upon how much fall rain we get, it depends on how much accumulated snow we get over the winter, and then what happens with the spring rains. So for the time being, for example, uh, we're telling folks, leave your sandbags in place. We think it's really vital that the county do everything it can to lower Lake Mendota without flooding Lake Monona and deal with the problems of congestion and, and water friction uh, at the southern end of Lake Monona and, and, and it be, uh, a, it set an objective of getting Lake Mendota down to its summer level minimum, again, without flooding Lake Monona and the surrounding area. I've described it before, and I'll continue to say it's like draining one bathtub through a straw into another bathtub. It is very difficult. If we can get it down there, get those lake levels down, um, then we'll, 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 we'll hopefully have a healthy spring. This is likely your last budget proposal. Do you feel sentimental or...? feel in any kind of way about it? Uh, I think it's a good budget proposal. And uh, I just want to see it adopted with as little friction as possible. Is there anything that you would have liked to have done but couldn't because of fiscal restraints? Oh, geez. And what would be the top things? Even greater funding for the peer support system, greater funding for the community centers, um, greater support services for the affordable housing that we're building, and more affordable and workforce housing. Um, I'd like to see far more in mental health uh, and substance abuse. For starters. And there's probably at least two dozen positions that agencies requested, particularly in the area of planning and design, where we could move neighborhood uh, plans forward uh, more effectively. And I've completely omitted discussion about transportation. I mean, let's have a couple hundred million dollars, build our new bus garage, implement bus rapid transit, and do some more long range public transportation planning for the metro area. And that, of course, would take more than money, but that also takes the creation of a regional transit authority. More electric vehicles. More solar.
more TIF for companies like Exact Sciences, which uh, sets a minimum starting wage of $15 an hour, health insurance, and pensions. And solve the golf course problem. I think I'll stop there. Anything else? Thank you very much.